Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2022. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure this book is in front of you when you're doing the work with me. Today we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number 117. Page 117, please turn to it. The very first problem you see there is number 34. In number 34 we are told that we're going to buy 11 doors. 11 doors, 5 of those are going to be hollow doors, 6 of them are going to be solid doors. We are further told that the regular price of a solid door is twice the price of the hollow door. But they have a 25% off. They have a discount going on on a solid door which means the solid door, the price of the solid door is three quarter of its regular price. We are further told that the price of a hollow door is $40. The question simply is, how much are we going to pay for these 11 dollars? Let's see, let's see what we can do. If we start our story, we begin our story from here. We know that the price of the hollow door, we are told that the price of the hollow door is $40. Which must imply that the price of the solid door, the regular price, is two times the amount. Two times 40 which is 80. However, because of the fact that they have a sale going on, we are only, we are only going to pay 75% of $80. There we go, we are done. We have the price of the solid door. We have the price of the hollow door. We can figure out the price of the five doors. Let's begin. So we're going to have five hollow doors. Each of them is $40. That's $200. And now the solid doors, they are each $60, and we're going to buy six of them. There you go, Three sixty. looks like we're going to pay a total of $560 for the 11 doors. Number 35. Number 35. We are going to order 25 crates of apples. We are going to order Macintosh, we are going to order Rome and we are going to order wine sap. I have no idea what wine sap is but that's what we are going to order. We are further told The number of crates of uh, wine set that we're going to order is more than the number of crates we're going to order for Macintosh. Similarly, we are told that the number of crap or uh, number of crates of uh, wine set that we're going to order is more than the number of crates of Rome. The question simply is, what's the possible, what's the least possible, least possible? number of wine set that we can order given the fact that altogether we are ordering 25, 25 of them. So here we go. We have Macintosh, Rome and wine set. Let's look at the two extremes. One extreme is that because the number of wine set has to be more than the number of Macintosh and the number of wine set has to be more than Rome, we could have 1, 1 and 23. But that's the scenario. That's the scenario where we can have the maximum number of wine sap. The question here is what's the least? And since we have 25 altogether, since we have 25 altogether, if we had 24, 24 divided by 3 would have been 8. So let's just do 8, 8 and put an extra line here. And now we have satisfied the condition here and here. This is the least we can have. The least number of wine sap that we can have is, num is 9. Number 36. In number 36, we're going to have two bicycles. A cheap one and an expensive one. The cheap one we are told is $250. The expensive one we are told is $375. The question is, the 
We bought these two bicycles, we sold these two bicycles after having purchased them and we sold them for the grand profit of $250 on both of them combined. We are also told that we sold one for $450. The question is what's the profit on the other one? That's all. What's the profit on the other one? What we don't know is, we are told that we sold one for $450. What we don't know is that uh, which one did we sell for $450? Did we sell the cheap one for $450 or did we sell the one for which we paid more money, the expensive one? Well, there are, let's, look at the both, let's look at both scenarios. Let's look at both scenarios. I have left no room here. I've taken too much room here. So here's the cheap one and here's the expensive one. If we sold if we sold the cheap one for 450, we know we sold one for 450. If we sold the cheap one for 450, we had bought the cheap one for 250, which means we made a profit of $200 on the cheap one. Our total profit is 250, which means the profit on the other must be $50. This is the profit on the other. And if you look at the answer choices, you will find that 50 is not one of the answer choices. 50 is not one of the answer choices, which means it must have been the expensive one that we sold for 450. So let's begin. Again, cheap one and expensive one. We're looking now at expensive one. If we sold the expensive one for 450, we had bought the expensive one for 375. 450 minus 400 would have been $50, so it's $75. So this is this is the profit. This is the profit on expensive one. Since our total profit is 250. Since our total profit is 250, 250 minus 75, 250 minus 100 would have been 150, so it's going to be 175. This must be the profit on the cheap one. And 175 is one of the answer choices. 175 is one of the answer choices. Number 37. In number 37 we are given a little triangle, looks something like this. A, B, C and D. We are told that this is 120 and we are told that A to C is 2. We are also told that B to D, B to D is 1 and B to C, uh, D, to, D to C is also 1. So this is where we're going to start our story. One more time, all the pieces of information, we know A to C is 2, we are told this distance is 1, D to C is 1, this angle is 120. The question is how much is angle triangle ABD? ABD, this is the triangle we're looking for. So let's begin our story, shall we? The fact that this side is 1 and this side is 1, which means these two sides are equal obviously, which means BDC is an isosceles triangle. BDC is an isosceles triangle. We also know that this is 120, which means this angle must be 60. If this angle is 60, which means the sum of this angle B and C has to be 120 because they have to add up to 180. If they have to add up to 120 and they have to be both equal, it turns out these two angles are also 60. So it turns out that the triangle BCD is actually an equilateral triangle. Okay, let's continue. We're looking for we're looking for this triangle here. Ah, so distance from A to C is 2, distance from A to C is 2, we are told D to C is 1. If D to C is 1, which means A to D must also be 1. So there you go. If this is 1 and this is 1, again we're looking at an isosceles triangle. This, this angle is 120, which means the sum of these two has to be 60, which means they both have to be 30. This has to be 30 and this has to be 30. Well, number 38. Number 38. In 38, we are told that k squared is equal to m squared. Question is, which must be true. We're looking for something 
a statement that has to be true at all times. The question is not, not question is not which may be true, which must be true. The first statement says that first statement says that k is equal to m. K is equal to m. So let's take a look at the let's take a look at this situation. If k squared is equal to m squared, for example, k could be positive two or negative two. Squared would be four, and similarly, m would be positive two or negative two, and that's the situation we're dealing with here. What we don't know is, what we don't know is, if they are both positive, or if they are both negative, or if one is negative and one positive. We have no, we have no way of knowing. So here, it could be true. It could be true. They may be true. They may both be equal to each other, or maybe one is positive and one is negative. In which case. This is not true. This is not something. Statement one, statement A is something that must, that may be true. It's not something that must be true. Similarly, in B, we have the same situation. K is equal to negative m. If k is negative two and m is also negative two, this is not equal. As you can see here, these are not equal. If that's the situation. Statement C says that k is equal to absolute value of m. If k is negative two, it doesn't matter whether m is positive two or not. This would not be true. If k is negative two, it will not equal to absolute value of two. Let's continue up here. D says k is equal to negative absolute value of n. If k happens to be positive two, as you can see, this is not going to work. Positive two would not equal negative two. This is wrong. The answer is E. Answer is E because e, e says that the absolute value of m is equal to absolute value of k, which has to be true because if they are absolute value, then it, it takes out the complication of not knowing not knowing whether they are positive or negative. It doesn't matter in this case. It doesn't matter whether whether the k is positive or negative or m is positive or negative. The absolute value, of course, would be equal to each other. The statement E is the one that is going to be true at all times. Number thirty-nine. In number 39, we have a total of $780, M, N, and O's. And we are told that we are going to split this amount of $780 in the ratio of 15 to 20 to 30. Question is, how much is, how much is M going to get? If they're going to be split in a ratio of 15 to 20 or 30, because they, they, they work uh, these many hours respectively. This guy worked 15 hours, this guy worked 20 hours and 30 hours. There we go. First thing, I'm, first, first thing we're going to do is divide the entire thing by 5, so we don't have to deal with huge numbers. If we divide the whole thing by 5, the ratio turns out to be 3 to 4 to 6. There we go. 3 to 4 to 6. 4 plus 6 is 10. There's 13. The total parts is 13. Let's divide this quantity by 13. So we can figure out what each part is worth. Uh, 13 times 5 I know is 65. And then I do know 13, 5, 13 times 5 because it's half of 130. Let's add one more 13. As we add one more 13, of course we're going to get 78, which means 78 divided by 13 is 6. And then we have a 0. Which means that each part is worth $60. Each of these part is worth $60. This guy has three parts, therefore he's going to have $180 for M. Number 40. Number 40. In 40 we are told the distance from P to Q plus Q to R is what percent greater than the distance P to R and the triangle looks something like this P, Q, R we are told that this is 8, this is 6 and this is a right angle triangle the fact that I did not draw it to scale it does not matter it does not matter because as I told you before we don't have to go around drawing everything to scale, we are not babies. I didn't mean to do it, but that's how it turned out. So this guy is 8 and this guy is 6. I hope that you're able to see right away that this is right, 
This is a special kind of triangle known as 345 triangle. P to Q is P to Q is 8, which is simply 4 times 2. 6 is simply 3 times 2. Here we go, we have 3, 4, 5. It's a, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So if you go from P to Q and Q to R, P to Q and Q to R, P to Q and Q to R, P to Q is 8, Q to R is 6, we're going to end up 14 miles. We're going to end up driving 14 miles. As opposed, to, as opposed to taking the direct route, which is 10 miles. So the question simply in our is, 14 is what percentage greater than 10? 14, 14 is 40% 40 greater than 10. Of course. Number, number 41. Number 41. It says x is a positive integer. That's important. It has to be. It needs to be. It needs to be an integer. It needs to be positive integer. And we are told that 4x, 4 x, 4s to x minus 3 is equal to 3, is equal to y. And the question is which can't cannot be y. Let's look at the answer choice from this side, shall we? The first one says 1. Can y be 1? The answer is yes. Y can, uh, y can be 1. If, if x happens to be 1, here we have, this is the answer choice rather, here we have 4 is to x minus 3. If x happens to be 1, 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. So that, uh, that works. Let's look at what, what happens if, if x is equal to 2. If x is equal to 2, 16 minus 3 would be 13. So that works. Or well, if x happens to be 3, 4 is to 3 is 64. 64 minus 1 is 61. Minus 3 is 61. So that works. If 4 happens to be 4, it's just going to be 16 times 16 times 16, 16 times 16. Well, I hope you know that you. I, I hope that you know your perfect squares. 16 squared is 256 minus 3 is 253. So that works. The one that does not work is 7. That's answer choice B. It does not work. It does not work because let's, let's do it here so you can see it. Why is it? Why, why is it that the y cannot be 7? Because if y were 7, what will end up is something like this. If y were 7, what will end up is something like this, which means that 4 is to x is equal, has to equal to 10. And in this case, in this case, there exists no integer, no positive integer, where this would be true. Because we go from 4 is to 1 to 4 is to 2, 4 is to no power, no whole number that is, can equal 10. The answer is b. Answer is B. Number 42. Number 42 says 1 minus 1.25 times n is equal to 1. Question simply is how much is n? How much is n? Let's find out. 1 minus 1 point, 1 minus 1.25 is simply negative 1 quarter. A negative 1 quarter n is equal to 1. Bring the, bring the 4 to this side, divide by negative, and you will find that n is equal to negative 4. This is just a silly question. Of course, negative 4 and negative 4 will cancel out, and you will end up with positive 1. It's just a silly question. Number 43. Quotient. When x is divided by two third is nine half. The question is, what is what is the value of x if when we divide x by two third, the result is nine half? What does quotient mean? 
for example, for example, if you will divide 14 by 2, 14 divided by 2 is 7. This is called quotient. Quotient is the result of division. Quotient is the end result of division. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to divide here. We are told that when x, we are told that when we divide x, when we divide x by two thirds, the result is nine half. X divided by two third is same as three x. Bring the three to the side. Three x over two equals nine over two. There you go. That makes life very easy. Since we have two at the two at the bottom on both sides, if you multiply both sides of the equation by two, the two is going to go away. Three x is equal to nine, which means x must be three. And that's all there is. X would have to be three. That was forty-three. Number forty-four. Number forty-four. In forty-four, we are told that this the sphere with radius r is inscribed in a cube. Is in a cube. The question is, what's the relationship between r and e? How are r and e related? If we if we have a sphere that is inscribed in a cube. Well, if we have a cube here. And if you put a sphere in it, three-dimension thing, it doesn't matter that the fact that we are putting a sphere in it, a ball in, in inside this box, in order for it to fit, what we need to understand is that in order for it to fit, this distance, which is the length of the box, which we are told is E, so the length of the box, which we are told E, cannot be, cannot be less than 2 times R. Or to put it another way, 2 times r, 2r, would have to equal e. There you go. Now we have the relationship. Therefore, r must be e over 2. This is just a very fancy way of saying something very simple. The length of the box, of course, would have to be half the diameter. And that's all there is. Number 45. Number 45. We are told that the price went up from dollar sixty-five to dollar eighty-two. We paid. Let's do it on this side here. The price of gasoline went up from dollar sixty-five to dollar eighty-two. We told that yesterday when the price was dollar sixty-five, we spent twenty-six dollars. Twenty-six dollars and forty cents. The question is, how much more would we have to pay for the same amount of gasoline? We're buying the same amount of gasoline as we bought yesterday, how much more we will have to pay given the fact the price has gone up from $1.65 to $1.82. Very, very first thing we need to do here is figure out how many, gas, gas, how many gallons of gasoline we have bought. In order to find how many gallons of gasoline we bought yesterday, we have two choices. One is the traditional way, which is to take the amount $26.40 and divide by $1.65. And you can figure out how many gallons we bought there. That's one way of doing this thing. I'm not going to go do that because I don't, I don't like it. It's just too ugly. Otherwise, just to do some trial and error. I'm I'm gonna buy 10 gallons. Down 65, if you buy 10 gallons, it's gonna be $16.50. As you can see, $16.50 is last less than what we actually paid. We still have 10 more dollars to go. Let's go, let's go buy five more gallons. Five more ga five more gallons because the math is very simple. If we buy five more five more gallons, we're gonna end up with uh, 25 and 16 plus. 6 plus 4 is 14, 15, 25, 25 is, it looks like, 25, 75 rather, 25, 75.
but we spent actually $26. Let's buy one more gallon. Let's buy one more gallon. 5 plus 5 is 0. Uh, carry 1, 14. Something has gone wrong here. I'm getting 40. Oh, it is 40. Then carry carry 1, 5 plus, 5 plus 1 is 6. There you go. It looks to me that we bought, it looks to me that we bought 14 gallons. Just give me a second, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused here. I don't have problem number 46. I left it out by mistake. I don't know how that happened, but I left it. We'll worry about it in a second. So it looks like we bought 16 gallons. The rest is very simple. From 82 to 65, from 82 to 65, uh, rather 65, 12 minus 5 is 7. It's 17 dollars more, 17 cents more per gallon, and we bought 16 gallons. This is 16 gallons. So it's just 16 times 17. 16 times 17 is what we're looking for. We know 16 times 16 is 256. I hope I hope you know that. You have to know your squares 1 through 20. 16 squares 256. If 16 16s are 256, we don't need 16 16. We need 17 16. Let's, let's add one more 16. So that's going to give us 2. Carry 1. That's going to give us 7. There we go. It looks like we're going to end up paying $2.72 more today compared to yesterday. That's all. We're going to stop right here. We're going to stop right here. I'll meet you tomorrow. And we're going to pick up from where we left off. Actually, we have one more problem. Problem number 46. Let's take a look at it very quickly. On that page. So that we don't have to come to it tomorrow. I have to pick up the entire book because I don't. I, apparently, I missed it. It says we're going to pay up to 75 taxes, uh, uh, 75 messages, up to 75 messages. We're going to pay 80% of ten dollars. That's just an annoying way of saying that we pay eight dollars. I don't know why they have to be so cute. Anything above 75, anything above 75. We're going to end up paying, oh I don't know why I'm looking at my notes, I don't have it, about six and a half cents. What are they asking? Based on the rates above, how much would company charge for a customer to use 95 messages? Well, there you go. 95 messages, 95 messages. The first 75 is very straightforward, it's just eight dollars. First 75 is eight dollars. So that's straightforward. The next 20 messages, Next 20 messages, since they are each six and a half cents, is just 20 times six and a half. 20 times six is 120, and half of 20 is 10, so we're going to end up paying dollar 30. Dollar 30 for the next 20 messages. Dollar 30 plus eight dollars. It looks like, it looks to me, that we're going to end up paying nine dollars and thirty cents. Answer is A. Answer is A. We'll stop right here. It's the end of the page. We're going to stop right here. We'll meet again tomorrow. We're going to pick up from where we left off. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to work with me, you can send me an email. Go to my website at kishwaniprep.com. From there, you can send me an email or you can fill out the form to give me more details about yourself. And we'll talk some more. All right? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.